calculating the mean, and sigma notation. The mean is simply the arithmetic average of a data set. This means it's found by summing or adding together all of the observations and dividing the result by the total number of observations in the data set. Earlier in example A, we calculated the median price quotation received from a list of bidders to be $65 per hour. The data set is shown again below. For project A, if we wanted to calculate the mean, we would just have to add up all of the observations and divide the result by the total number of observations. So in other words, the mean would be found by calculating 70 plus 80 plus 65 plus 50 all the way up to the last observation, 25, and then dividing by the total number of observations, 11. The mean is calculated here to be 69.09. The formula for the mean can be expressed quite compactly using sigma notation. The Greek symbol, capital sigma, is used to denote the process of summation, or adding up. The symbol sigma from i equals 1 to n of x subscript i can be interpreted as follows. The i at the bottom of the sigma is called the index of summation. It goes from 1 all the way up to n, the total number of observations to be summed. This means that if we sum all of the terms starting from the first one, and ending at the last one, we move from i equals 1, the first observation, all the way to i equals n, the last observation. If we denote each of the observations in the data set by xi, we get x1 is equal to 70, x2 is equal to 80, x3 is equal to 65, and so on, until x10 is equal to 110 and x11 is equal to the last observation being 25. If, for example, we wanted to find the sum from the third until the sixth term, we would write i equals 3 all the way to 6 of the xi's. This would yield sum i equals from 3 to 6 xi, giving us x3 plus x4 plus x5 plus x6. And this would equate to the third observation being 65, plus the fourth being 50, plus the fifth observation being 45, and finally the sixth observation being 100. And uh, the net result would be 260 after summing all of those observations together. We can therefore write the process of calculating the mean as the sum, or sigma, i equals 1 all the way to n, of all of your xi's, divided by the total number of xi's, which is n. So the expression above in this example would translate into the sum from i equals 1 to 11 of the xi's, divided by the total number of xi's, which would just be 11. So then we'd add x1 plus x2 all the way up to x11 divided by 11, and this would work out to be 69.09 as before. If our random variable is denoted by capital X, then the mean of our data set would be denoted by X with a line above it called X bar. If the random variable is denoted by Y, the mean of the data set would be denoted by Y bar, and so on. So you just take the lowercase letter of your random variable and just put a dash above it, and you'd call it that letter bar. Other important uses of sigma notation would be covered in the following chapter. Calculating the mean from a frequency table. When given a frequency table, the formula for calculating the mean is given by x bar equals the sum from i equals 1 all the way to n of fi times by xi divided by the sum from i equals 1 to n of all your fi's. So here xi denotes the actual ith observation and fi denotes the ith frequency. So this formula should make logical sense after considering the following example. Example D. Consider the data set shown below. This is the same data set taken from example B. 
and calculate the mean rating from the customer satisfaction survey. So again, we have one star going all the way up to five stars and we have their respective frequencies. Solution. Let X be the rating obtained on any particular feedback form. In order to calculate the mean, we would intuitively add up all of the ratings obtained and then divide the result by the total number of observations. In the table above, we have 23 one-star ratings, 52 two-star ratings, 175 three-star ratings, and so on. So this gives us 1 times 23, in other words, one star, and 23 of those, plus two stars, and 52 of those, plus three stars, and 175 of those, plus four stars, and we had 200 of those, and last but not least, we had five stars, and we had 50 of those. We divide all of that by 500, the total number of observations, and then we get x bar, or our mean, to be 3.4 to one decimal place. What we did intuitively is exactly the same thing as calculating x bar is equal to the sum of all the fi's, the individual frequencies, multiplied by their observations. So you take the observation, one star, and you multiply it with its frequency, we had 23 one-star observations. And then you divide all of that by the sum of all the frequencies. And the sum of all the frequencies is just the total number of observations in your data set. Calculating the mean from a grouped frequency table. When given a grouped frequency table, it was mentioned earlier that we don't know the actual values for each of the observations. All we know is the range into which each of the observations fell. Therefore, the mean cannot be calculated exactly from a grouped frequency table. It must be estimated. Example E. Calculate the mean from the following table, taken from example C of chapter 2. Here it was the example where we had the light bulb experiment to see how many light bulbs would burn out after a certain amount of hours. So in order to estimate the mean, we take the midpoints of each of the intervals as our individual observations, our xi's. So just remember this is an estimation because we don't know the exact time for each individual light bulb to burn out. So we just take the midpoint of each interval as an estimate. So to calculate the midpoint, you add the start and the end points of each interval together, and then you divide by 2. And this is shown in the table below. So for our first interval between 0 and 50, the midpoint would just be 25, and we would calculate that by saying 0 plus 50 divided by 2. For the next interval, it would be 75, and that would just be found by saying 50 plus 100 divided by 2 and so on and so on until the last column, which is just a midpoint of 275, and that would be found by saying 250 plus 300 divided by two. So we can then calculate the mean by using our formula, x bar is equal to the sum of all the frequencies multiplied by the observations divided by the sum of all the frequencies. So this would give us 10 times 25 for the first column y because we have 10 observations that correspond to a value of 25 on average. Remember we don't know what each of the observations were but on average we can estimate that each of the observations took on a value of about 25. So similarly for the next column where the midpoint was 75 we had 115 observations of 75. For the next column we had 125 observations of 125, and so forth until the final column where we had 25 observations of 275 on average. We would then divide that by the total number of observations being 1000, and we would get our mean to be 162 hours. So here, the mean is relatively close to the median, that we estimated earlier from the cumulative frequency curve that we drew. So recall that the median was 165. 
So an advantage of using the mean as a descriptive tool is that it uses all of the data points in the data set to arrive at its value. There is therefore no wasted information. However, along with this advantage comes a drawback. The mean can be distorted by outliers, unlike the median, which discards potential outliers.